I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here because I mentioned this in a lot of videos, but we've had a good string of degenerate human beings come through our store recently, so I feel like it's worth just pointing this out one more time. If everybody likes you all the time, you are doing something wrong. I know deep down inside as a business owner, you really care about making everybody happy. You really care about giving people the kind of service that you would like to receive. But at the end of the day, if everybody likes you all the time, you're probably doing something wrong. And I want you to remember this when you get to those moments where you feel like you should say no, but you wind up saying yes and you don't realize why. I want you to repeat this mantra to yourself. If everybody likes you all the time, you're doing something wrong. And I want to bring up two recent examples uh, that inspire this video. Usually, when somebody brings an iPhone in, I go through everything on it. Camera, you know, a little vi vibrate switch, volume up and down, power button, home button. Because as you people who work on these know, these buttons and these switches on the iPhone are complete pieces of dog shit. It's not like my $90 Game Boy that my mom got me in 1995 that to this day still works even though I mash the buttons. You mash on that power button for four or five months on your $600 phone and it's fucked. Thank you, Apple. Moving on, because I don't want this to be a video about bashing Apple products, this person comes in and the home button isn't really uh, clicking right, but they're going to get their screen fixed. Now, usually I mention this, but since this fucker is <clears throat> Use it trying to beat the fucking shit out of his phone and get back to his home screen so that he could check a text message before he hands it to me. I figured maybe he already knew that this shit didn't work. Just because he's not just doing this, he's like, <clears throat> <clears throat> and you can see his fucking face getting angry and veins and, you know, mm. Now, I also didn't offer to upsell them on it because this is somebody who spent five minutes trying to barter my price of 65 plus tax for original iPhone 4 screen down, which is, let's face it, in our market, completely fucking ridiculous. I have matched the price of the 99 cent store at this point, which is just embarrassing, but I've done it for the sake of business. And I fix it and I give it back to him, and him and his girlfriend are just enraged, like, why is this button not working? Why is this button not working? It worked before. And I actually had to bring up camera footage. This happened just today. This actually happened to my coworker two days ago, but it happened to me today, where I actually had to bring up camera footage of this motherfucker bashing his home button and saying, do you do this shit for fun? Is this how you get your rocks off? Do I need to call 311 and report you for abuse of Apple fucking products, or are you just a lying piece of shit that had a broken home button all along? And because I was so angry, and so annoyed, and I had clearly lost my mind for about a period of 30 seconds. My eyes were uh, enlarged, my face was all excited. Uh, he just looked and he, his girlfriend dragged him right out the door. And I never heard from him again. Uh, another recent one, which it wasn't really that bad, was a time where I actually decided to stay a little late to, to fix somebody's phone. This person shows up at 8.01, I close at 8. Thank you, jackass. But feeling nice this day, I decided to actually fix it. Now this is an iPhone 5, and you're familiar with how the frames on the iPhone 5s are. It's not like the 3 or the 4, where the frame is, you know, doesn't need banging out. It's like an iPad or an iPod Touch sometimes, where you have to you know, beat the frame out in the corners to actually fit in a screen. This one is not even a square anymore. It's like a, it's like a it's set of parallel lines that are caving in on themselves in the corners. You can't even say this phone has corners. And I managed to fix it after an hour of working on the case, and I explained very, very politely, you need to buy a case for this phone. If you drop this again, it's going to break easier than before because your case has been completely sodomized in order to fit the screen in because of how badly you sodomized this when you not only dropped it once, but dropped it repeatedly prior to bringing it here. And this person smiles, happy, okay. Uh, three weeks later, they come in and go, I put this phone down on the counter and it dropped. And as you know from my last video, when people say, I put my phone down on the counter, they don't mean that they put their phone down on the counter. They mean that they put their phone down on the fucking counter because their boyfriend dumped them, because they can't get any weed tonight in the East Village, because somebody else is fucking their boyfriend. Whatever the fuck it is, that's how most people put their phone down. And if you don't believe me, watch how they treat it when they leave it for repair. But I digress. And I say, I can meet you halfway on the price here, but no, I'm not doing this for free. I clearly told you you need to buy a case, and based on the sheer size of this, you dropped it again. And I get this one-page, shit-ass Yelp review about, screen installed improperly, blah, blah, blah. It broke again, and they wanted me to pay money. I wish that I had never spent money here. And I wish that I actually had went out that Friday night to a movie 
or to the park and have some fucking fun with people instead of saying fix your device. Trust me, we all have regrets here, but I digress. You can't make everybody happy all the time. We have another person come in who has a defective screen, and I feel bad for this, which is why I offer a warranty. He says, you know, I had this fixed a few weeks ago, and on occasion I see a line on the bottom. So I go ahead to replace it, and he comes back and he says that he would like $50 off of the 65 because he had to come back, and it cost him a cab ride from the Upper West Side in traffic. And no, um, you know, Best Buy doesn't pay for your cab ride if you have to return to television. Macy's doesn't pay for your cab ride if there's a if there's a stitch coming out of your shirt. No, no, you you, you can you can, you can suck it because uh, you are being completely fucking ridiculous. And again, if you go to the 99 cent store right around the corner from me, and you have any sort of issue, you know what they're going to do? They're going to look at you and go, "No returns, all sales final." Because that's what people who charge $65 plus tax in a major metropolitan area do when you come back for warranty because they are making virtually nothing off of you. As a result, they treat you like garbage. Here, as I explained, you have a one-year warranty. Did I say you dropped it? No. Did I accuse you of anything? No. Did I even look up your ticket? I remembered who you were. This kind of warranty service is offered because I'm actually making a modicum of money off of this service. And we are matching the price of people who have no warranty. As a result, I'm not lowering this price. And we get some miserable one-star review about, he sucks at running a business. He actually made me come back for my warranty and didn't pay for my expensive overpriced gypsy cab ride. Fuck you. That sometimes people are simply going to hate you. And you have to be okay with the fact that people are going to hate you. Because if everybody likes you, if that motherfucker that wants me to fix the crack again for free, if that motherfucker that wants me to fix something that he broke probably by just sodomizing his phone, pretending that it's his overprotective mother that he's bashing on, or whatever the fuck his mental problem is, if I actually cater to these people, there's no longer something wrong with them, there's something seriously wrong with me. And I need you to understand that you simply cannot make everybody happy. And I myself am guilty of what I'm talking about in this video. I'm speaking from experience. I'm somebody who has on many occasions felt a sense of personal failure when I was unable to make somebody happy. I wasn't really inspired to do this until the last possible experience, which I'm saving because it was a good one. I actually had signs put up that try to prepare people for the experience of coming here. And one of them will say on it, you don't argue with Macy's about sales tax. You don't argue with Sears. You don't argue with the grocery store. So kindly don't argue with here. Any price that we give you, uh, it does not include the sales tax. And we had somebody come in, bitch, 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 about the price of something, and they go, but you told me no tax! And we go, no, that's, no, nobody, nobody would ever say that here. And she goes, yes, you did! And I go, and I look at my, uh, my sign, and I go, it says uh, that we charge tax. And she goes, oh. and, I, and I look over at my technician, because at this point, I had clearly snapped, because I had spent too much time trying to make people happy, and I said, what do you think? Where should this sign go? I think we should put it where people can read it. I ripped the sign off the wall, and the, the woman had been standing right here. So I go, where do you think I should put this sign? Maybe I should take it and put it right here. Right here! And I, it, it, there's no real effect here because I'm not actually banging something. The sign is actually attached to a screen, so when I clanked it against the drywall, I made a boom! And the drywall moved back a little bit and then vibrated back and scared the living piss out of her, and she actually ran out of the store with her phone. So that's why this is important, because if you try to make people happy all the time, you can actually become a complete raging fucking lunatic like I am, where you're at the point of slamming things right next to people's heads and not even noticing it until they're literally running out of your store. Please learn a lesson from, uh, from my mistakes and don't, don't repeat them. Don't become, and again, this is where you get on the road to becoming that curmudgeon old technician that I talked about in prior videos where you see everybody as a problem, where you see every single uh, attempt at resolving an issue as somebody just complaining and bitching and whining away from you. And, it, it, it's, and people don't become that overnight. They become it over years, decades of being bothered and letting these things personally get to them. And if you allow yourself to accept the fact that some people are simply going to hate you, it allows you to enter your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, and your 80s and still love what you do and still love the people who bring you uh, their cars, their game consoles, you know, the, 
their home improvement projects, whatever field it is you're in, instead of just feel, seeing them all as just, as, as just dollar signs with mouth. Now, second of all, there's a great saying that a lot of these people have, and it's happy people and unhappy people alike, which is, I'm going to tell all my friends. There's a reason that this is a good saying. A lot of my friends, well, we have very different political views, we, have, we work in different professions, we're very like-minded. So, if I'm a piece of shit degenerate, it's very likely that my friends are piece of shit degenerates as well. So if you treat a piece of shit degenerate like the degenerate that they are, they're most likely going to tell all of their degenerate friends how bad you are, and you're never going to get to meet all of these just garbage human beings. So, there, this is a very effective word-of-mouth advertising for you, because again, all of these people with their serious mental issues, with their sense of entitlement and wah, 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 these are people who you're never going to see. You're never actually going to have to argue with them because they will not come to your business. They will go bother somebody else, and when that somebody else treats them ten times worse than you ever would have, that'll be a bad review or that'll be a chargeback for that, for that other poor sucker that had to deal with it. So, point being, you cannot please everybody. And you need to re another thing about this video. You need to realize when a job is a clusterfuck. Uh, there's a guy on here called Eli the Computer Guy, and he has this great term called rabbit hole to hell. He uses it to describe a problem. He uses it to describe a problem that you're never, ever, ever going to fix. It doesn't matter how, di how much deeper you dig, you're never going to find a fix for the problem. Uh, you know, an example of this, if you're into Linux, is trying to compile GNOME 3 on get to. In our business, an example of this is a job that simply never gets done. An example of that in this business is a job where nothing you do actually fixes the problem. Every time you know you're going to fix the problem in this much time and the customer is allowed to you just this much, it's never going to work. I need you to realize that the more angry somebody is, the more time restrictions they put on you, that the more of a clusterfuck the situation is going to become. And Every single time somebody sends you a six-page email about how you need to overnight something for them, when you overnight that for them, it's not going to work because they are who they are. And I know this sounds strange, especially coming from a man who's not religious, but their energy, their negativity is actually going to make their situation worse. Their negativity is going to make that part not work. It's going to make that part not what they need. If you tell somebody, instead of giving you a refund, I will fix this issue for you in an hour, you're not going to fix that issue for them in an hour. You need to realize when an issue is just going to get worse and worse and worse and understand that bailing it does not mean that you're giving up. Bailing means that you're practically realizing that there is nothing you can do and that the best thing you can do is stop wasting both your time, this person's time who has hopes that you can actually help them, and everybody else's time who you actually have an opportunity to help by trying to fix this one issue for this one negative human being. I, I know this sounds strange, and this used to happen in the recording studio. And the, the computer knows. The computer knows when a client is miserable. The tape machine knows when a client is miserable. I'm not going to use the name of this motherfucker, but people who know me know exactly which famous uh, singer-songwriter for the past 25 years and producer I'm talking about here, where the tape machine over a period of 18 hours kept dying every single time this goddamn asshole walked in the room. The machinery and the world knows when somebody is being an asshole and it simply refuses to work with them. And you need to understand that as well. Sometimes a job is simply going to get worse and worse and worse. And a lot of people will get this idea, if we just do this, if we just do that, instead of refunding their money, that it's going to get better. But sometimes you simply need to give up because it's not only the best thing for you, it is the best thing for them. And regardless of how miserable somebody is, this can be hard to do because the second you say, I give up, here it is as it was, here's your money, I don't even care that it's better than it was in the first place, just here. They're going to understand that they've hit a sensitive point because people get scared when professionals choose to not work with them. It's one thing when their friend or an acquaintance or their family member says, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. But when an actual paid professional says, I'm sorry, I can no longer help you, it really strikes an herb and somebody even the worst volatile customer who hates your guts, that, wow, I've kind of done something wrong. And they're going to do a full 180 uh, to try to be nice and to try to make up for it. But you cannot let that sway you because as soon as you start working on the miserable project again, you're going to get sucked into it again. You're going to get a phone call every 45 seconds asking if it's done when you told the person it will take three hours. 
and it's, it's not going to work. I need you to realize when the rabbit hole to hell job needs to be given up on. And I need you to realize that that is not something to be ashamed of.